Hi guys, it's me Julie. I'm in the garden today and I wanted to make a little video about what's going on. Um, some fun things, some exciting things. I've been harvesting what little I have, which I think is kind of a blessing sometimes because I've never grown chard before, but the fact that I have a, an amount of chard that I can cook with and experiment with tells me whether or not, I think I got a booger. Oh, boo. Ew, gross. <laughs> anyway, like you've never had a booger. Um, what? <laughs> Sorry. That's so weird. Um, so I cooked with chard last night so with um, some a pan full of new potatoes that were just beautiful and tasted so good. And the chard... I made chard and I mixed it with um, Parmesan cheese, some butter, some milk, some um, onion, and some um, garlic, salt and pepper. Um, mixed that into sort of like a, a, a sauce. Um, and then poured that over carrot, roasted carrots and potatoes. So, so good that's gonna be on the menu so that's kind of cool it's like god gives us what we can handle and that's some of the things i complain about god my eyebrows are awful look at that Oof. <sighs> growing something um you know some of the things i didn't have a huge rat radish harvest this year um but i did try roasted radishes for the first time and they're really good they taste like cabbage kind of uh, so I'm probably gonna grow more radishes and roast more radishes um, I have got a ton of nasturtiums that I'm gonna start working with to see what I can grow but I'm gonna show you without further ado show you the garden so in my first bed we've got this is butter crunch lettuce and it is going to seed. This is a radish that I'm letting kind of go and seeing what happens. Well, I know what's gonna happen. It's gonna seed. These flowers are really tasty. I tried them. They taste like radish. Um, nasturtiums, I haven't eaten any of them. You can eat the leaves and the flowers, but I haven't. I guess they're kind of spicy. Um, so, this I think is a tomato. Just kind of leaving it. It looks like a tomato. It's a volunteer if it is. I didn't plant that. Oh, look, my purslane. Not purslane. I keep calling this purslane. Vite mosh. Or corn salad. It's really good. I've had some of it. Um, I'll grow it in the future. It's really easy to grow. Ruby reef leaf lettuce. It's kind of starting to get bitter. Uh, my kale is all eaten up. And the butter crunch, I didn't get in time, and it's all going to seed. So, unfortunately, that's just the story there. Um, with the drought, the peas aren't doing great. I did harvest quite a few, though, and, you know, snacked on peas every day when I came out to the garden. I got a handful or so, which is the main reason I grow peas. So, um, here's my green stalk. Can you see it? Okay. There's the green stalk in all her glory. Got my row of nasturtiums, green beans, lettuce. The marigolds are in bloom. I'm gonna weed today and um, mow the lawn. Um, I harvested a ton, a ton of mint and I've been using the mint to make hot and cold tea and I mix it with um, other things that I'm growing. I've got chamomile, that's over here. I'll show you the chamomile and the lavender. Um, so mint, chamomile, and lavender, I grow all for tea. So here, and this is my first year. I grew these this year for the first time, and so I just harvested it. It smells so good. You just pop off the little flowers once they start to droop a little bit. 
so I just did that um, and here's my lavender I know it gets better and bigger than that but this one I'm just happy that I've got what I've got I've got some chard that has gone to seed here uh, this is my oregano and it needs a haircut um, my onions are about done need to harvest my garlic I did harvest some took it in the house and my kids threw it away because they thought it was bad radishes <laughs> So, um, I got some turnips. Let me show you. They're pretty eaten up by bugs. There's a little tiny one. Uh, and there's one. I don't know if you can see that. Something here, seeding. I don't want you. This kale is eaten up. But my daughter has really decided she loves kale chips. So that's when it's lacy like that I don't even bother with it you could just like use it as something to cook with because it kind of cooks down into a greens type deal um a lot of ants all over my peas this year so I probably need to read about that if you could share what you know about it just leave it in the comments uh, but I don't know why. I've never had that problem before. See, I've got peas. These really need to be untied and fixed here. They're kind of a mess. But I show everything. I don't edit my videos. So, here's just a handful of peas I just picked. So... I'm still getting a good harvest and some of them when they're young you can eat the pods there's still more on there um, and when they're older and more developed I just pop them open and eat them like skittles <laughs> so this is why I grow peas it's just I love coming out here and snacking on them I don't cook them. I never cook them. And I've grown these for three or four years now. Some years are better than others. This has not been a great year for my peas. Last year, they were about eight foot tall by now. This one is ready for starting a new pea plant. So I'll just drop that one on the ground. Push it in. Maybe it'll grow a pea. There's another one that did it, seeded itself. See, there's an ant. Oof, I hate those black ants. I sprayed it with neem oil. Um, got a cucumber growing here. Two cucumbers growing there. I did harvest a couple of carrots. I need to thin these out more. See how close they are together. Those will not produce carrots. They're way too close together. Even this one should probably come out. I'm just going to go ahead and take both of those. See? So I need to come out here and thin those. That's a to-do list. Like I showed you my turnips. And you can eat the greens of the turnips. I haven't done that yet. But I grew beets and turnips. I did harvest a beet. The beets aren't doing super great. Um, but I, I grew beets and turnips because I thought... You know, you can grow, you can eat the lettuce part, the lettuce, the greens, the leaves, you can eat them for their leaves. And then like a green, turnip greens or beet greens. And then you also get roasted beets or turnips. I don't know how to cook beets. I'll look it up when I get them. I've got one beet in the house that I haven't cooked. I think this was spinach, but I'm just going to pull it. Something over here stinks. Oh, I know what that is. That's the neem oil. The tomatoes. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me show you what. Let me set these be these green or uh, peas down over here on the picnic table, and we'll go look at. Uh, the tomatoes.
All right. So, story of the tomatoes. Um, if you saw my last video, um, which I haven't done a garden tour in a little while. I've just been taking pictures and then making those into like a video slideshow. Um, but if you look closely at those, you'll see that all of my tomatoes, let's see if I can find one that's an example. They're all way better than they were. But here are these leaves here. Those are way better than it was. I pulled most of the dead yeah, nasty here some. The dead nasties off yesterday. They're real thick and curled. So I'm gonna cut this branch off. And I'll probably cut the tip of this branch off. I might even cut this whole thing. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll cut this whole thing. I think it's sending up a new thing because it's my first year trimming them down to a single stalk. Um, like I learned on Roots and Refuge. And I think I trimmed the wrong stalk. That's part of my problem. So it has sent up a different plant here. Basically we're starting over. So I'm going to trim this off. This won't flower or anything. But if you see, I did that with this one here. Trimmed that down to the ground. And this new one that came up is looking healthy. So... I don't know how much harvest I'll get off the tomatoes this year, but I definitely have some um, that are flowering. Um, so I'll get some. Um, these are cherry tomatoes here that I got from Baker Creek, and I'm really excited about those. And those look pretty healthy. I planted a couple more seedlings that I had set aside for whatever didn't survive. That over there is just a trying, me trying to see if I could get a um, side growth to sprout by just putting it in the um, dirt. And um, I did that with this one too. This is, that's what that is. And I planted it really deep and really moist. And it's not drooping anymore. So it's doing okay. I think if you do it properly, you can just cut, um, a, what did they call them, suckers? off and plant them and they'll grow roots i only soaked them in the water for about 15 minutes and i got some rooting hormone yesterday at the store but i had already done this so i had never seen rooting hormone at the store before but when i saw it i snatched it up so there's one that's you know, kind of still drooping so we'll see if that one pulls back through i'm gonna do a little more pruning out here today it was super hot yesterday strawberries I have been eating strawberries, not huge amounts, maybe like five. Um, <laughs> I think there's something in there. Oh, it's a big spider. Uh, two strawberries there growing. See, there's three. The kids have had a couple. So, I mean, we probably had a dozen strawberries, and this is their first year. So that's not really too bad. Whatever I get my first year, I'm like, that's cool. I have grown str strawberries before, and they're pretty pretty easy to grow um yeah potatoes yeah i told you before i harvested some i've got these potato bags and i got these at amazon and you just pull this up and you can dig in here and you'll find i'm making a mess on my mulch i don't usually do it this way but Keep digging, I'm gonna show you what to make a potato and how this works. And if you see a bunch of potato beetles, you're gonna have to pull your pants. Don't want to see any of that. Nothing yet. Come on. No potatoes yet. They're in here. Oh, you know what? This was a bad one to choose because the potatoes, there's no potatoes growing here. They're on this side. They're over here. Now it's personal. I have to get a potato. 
at least one. Aha, there's a teeny tiny, okay. There's more where that came from. There we go. Wow, look at that. See, little tiny ones. Did you get enough of these? Little ones even. Mine were much bigger than that last night, and there probably are in there too. So, I'm gonna harvest these today. So, there's potatoes in there. They're probably about that big. Most of them, and then I've got some smaller ones. Um, so let's go on to watermelon. I am um, doing the TP method with the watermelon, and I learned that on Next Level Gardening. He used to be called California Gardener, um, and he does a kind of different trellising that I haven't seen anywhere else. But it's kind of cool. So I'm going to try some of his methods. And I'm just going to wrap this around so the watermelon will have plenty of stability. And I'll use pantyhose or some um, loofah netting that you can get, like Dollar Tree, you can go get loofahs, take them apart, and they'll have, like, a, it's almost like a pouch. And you can make a little pouch for your watermelon, and you just hang it to this. I've done it on the fence. Um see my watermelon sign. Isn't it cute? I gotta have my watermelon sign. Just in case anybody wants to know what's growing here. There's watermelon. So I've got three more that I need to teepee. I mean those teepees are pretty expensive. If you could source those by yourself, which I probably could have done, um, you'd be better off. See over there, I have fencing that I could take those fence boards off and make teepees with. And if I was more resourceful, I would have done that. But I didn't. In fact, I just now had that idea. So. <laughs> oh, look at my volunteers. I have more volunteers this year than I've ever had before. These, I think, are cucumbers. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. They're so cute. Little volunteer cucumbers. So I'm just going to let them grow and give mama some cucumbers. Um, this is my arch trellis. This is where we were supposed to get married. But it rained really bad and his whole backyard was flooded. We got married in our living room. It wasn't super romantic, but we're married. All right, so I've got, um, what is that? Oh, yeah. That my dears is root no red runner beans red runner beans and we still have the peas up here but the peas did not do very well because of the snow and then I think that's watermelon I don't know what it is but I think it's watermelon so I might have some watermelon on my arch trellis won't that be lovely? Uh, let's see, these almost completely died with the drought, but they seem to be popping back. We've had a few days of rain. These are the only peas right here, sweet pea flowers that have even bloomed and they're kind of pathetic. So here they are. I shouldn't call you pathetic. You're still beautiful, but not what I'd hoped. I like them because they're really delicate looking. So let's go on to zucchinis. Um, I need to prune them back a little bit, I think. Some things are getting shaded out. So here's the zucchini. It's flowering, but I think I don't see anything pollinated. <gasps> yes, I do. Look, guys. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? It's a zucchini. It's going to get in my belly. I'm going to make zucchini bread. 
got zucchinis. I got a zucchini. <laughs> Hopefully there will be more to come. Any more zucchini? Please, please. Yay. Um, that's about it for the... Oh, wait. Let me see. I think there's... Oh, I have to tell you about the... My Brussels sprouts. Let me tell you a story. I started growing my Brussels sprouts in January in little plastic cups. And they were tiny, 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 forever. I germinated them in a refrigerator, an old refrigerator with a heat pad and a light in January because I don't have room in my house. They did great. When I put them in the ground, they took off. But then, I mean, through the drought, through the cool temperatures, through the snow, through the humid, hot, crazy, hot, wild weather we've had this year, they've done great. They're very hardy. But they were attacked. Attacked by cabbage worms. I hate cabbage worms. Look at them. I have been putting neem oil and diatomaceous earth when I can. I don't see anything alive right now. It smells like neem oil. Kind of stinky. I don't know if they'll still produce for me. It's my first year. I tried to grow it last year and did not have success because it was shaded out by my cabbages. We had the little babies, they laid their eggs in here, and little baby cabbage worms. I picked probably 50 cabbage worms off alive, fed them to the chickens, and watched as they screamed to bloody murder. Just kidding. <sighs> but their babies then hatched and started eating, as they do. And then I killed their babies. This is the chard that I picked yesterday. See, I'm gonna pick more because these are beautiful leaves. So good, I love chard. Chard is delicious, y'all. Cook it the way I said. Parmesan, milk, or cream. Um, what's that? Is that one? That is one. See that? It's dead though. Butter, milk, or cream. Um, garlic onion i did the the stalks i sauteed the stalks like as if i was making like sauteed onions or something they, they taste they have a kind of a celery taste and then i did the leaves separately because they don't cook at the same amount of time as the stalks do stalks are tougher and it was just it was delicious it was really yummy i was super happy with that it was so good i'm gonna eat some of that leftover for lunch and my potatoes I grew were so delicious. I just can't describe how much better food is when you grow it yourself. Knowing your food story, like these cucumbers I got from Baker Creek and I didn't think they were gonna grow. They were in that little thing in the greenhouse. I thought they're never gonna come up and they went through the frost and it looked like there was it was dead. Those two and those two corns over there that are, that are ta uh, tasseled, they're, the, they're older because they, they actually grew up in the greenhouse by some miracle after going through crazy hot and crazy cold temperatures with snow and all kinds of stuff. And the beans are definitely stunted because last year I had beans up to here. These are big kahuna beans, so they should be four or five feet tall and these are runner beans they should be up the, all the way up the trellis but look i do have beans there's a little spider on it but i do have beans see them i need to come out here and get them because they'll keep producing for me 
Let me come get the beans. I think we're having green beans for supper tonight. My peppers I thought were dead. They're starting to come back. I hope they do. Look at this disease. Is that disease or is that bugs? I think that's pest pressure right there. You know, when a plant is weakened by the temperatures, it's vulnerable to disease and pest pressure. And I have definitely experienced that. Now, this is lemongrass. It looks like a weed. This is lemongrass. And it smells really good. The leaves smell really good. I don't know if you can use it for tea or not, but I bet you could. I don't know. I'm going to have to research that. But you, they say you get it for the um, roots. And you cook the roots. Lemongrass tea. Next to my chamomile. My rosemary. I need to cut some of that off. Give it a haircut. This rosemary. I love it. Oh, it's so aromatic. This is thyme. I don't really know how to cook with thyme yet or what to put it in, but I guess you just experiment. I threw some random seeds in here that I didn't even know what the seeds were. I think they're herbs. I threw those in the flower pots with a couple of nasturtiums too, just to see what would grow. I thought, why not? We've got um, cantaloupe struggling to still survive here in this mess. Look at this mess. Fruit alley. <laughs> oh, here. While well, I'm passing by, I didn't mention Gus the asparagus. Look how tall those are. Are you supposed to stake those? Because I didn't. And they're falling over. They are one of the tallest things I've got growing. <laughs> um, so this is my tallest cantaloupe. It's growing up the fence here. Found its way all by itself. I didn't even help it. My blueberries are hidden in weeds. More blueberries hidden in weeds. More blueberries hidden in weeds. Blackberries here. Let me see. Blackberries. There's my blackberries on. There's my blackberries. Blackberries. This is their second year. Blackberries. Definitely pest pressure on these babies. We'll see what we can get. I have put any more on them. So, I guess we're back to the front, aren't we? So, I have to get the weed eater out, but it's been raining now after the drought and the oppressive heat where I couldn't even come out at seven or eight o'clock and breathe. Now we have had tons of rain and I couldn't come and do this. So the weather has prevented me or I would have been on top of this. Um, so today's the day. Uh, what else did I tell you about the garden? I think we covered everything. Yep. Oh, the corn. The corn and Lydia's garden and then I've got some more squash over there. Got some tomatoes here on the end that are doing good. I, there's, they've got the same story as those tomatoes over there. This is my tallest corn. I don't know why Green Giant's so tall because he's just as young as the rest of his brothers. This is the one I grew in the greenhouse that I didn't think was going to grow. And those two, actually. Look at my pretty wildflowers. Pretty daisies, and marigolds, and violas. Here's my daughter's garden. Isn't it nice? She's a good little gardener. It's pretty wild, but <laughs> I think it gets a lot of water because I pour water on these beds and it just floats down and goes right here. It's usually flooded right here, just saying. She hasn't put anything on things, I don't think. I don't think she's used neem or anything. Her stuff seems to be faring better than mine. And it's shaded right now, and it's only morning. See, this This is what I deal with. See where the sun is? Trees. 
trees 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 there used to be a huge tree right there last year we cut that down trees so this is a shaded garden so there's no area of my yard look this way trees tall trees everywhere trees 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 we've cut we cut one a big one down there and a huge one that was probably five foot across trees 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 this is a whole line of trees 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 so there's no area of this yard that is not partial shade that only gets four to six hours of sun so if you're dealing with shade you can grow a garden you don't get as much produce some things do better than they would if you didn't have this much shade. Of course, there's always pros and cons to everything. But, you know, you deal, you do with what you have. And this is what I have. So, this is what I do. So this grass is getting mowed. As soon as I get off of here, this video is 30 minutes long. So, that's enough. The chickens are doing fine. Want to see them? Just say bye to the chickens. And then I'll get off. Oh, the tractor. I have to tell you this real quick. The tractor, stupid tractor has to go back. It's been in the shop twice. Gone for six weeks the first time. If it's gone for another six weeks, that's our whole summer. The whole reason we got the tractor. Not happy with Rural King. My husband's looking into getting a John Deere. My chicken babies are giving us a very consistent seven eggs a day. And always shall, I believe. Right, Melly? Until your dem demise when you get in my belly. I don't know if I could do it. I don't know. I love them. They've been giving them lots of scraps from the garden and from our fridge. They've got some watermelon in there now they've been munching on. The kids are scared of them, so they just throw the plates in, I guess. <laughs> I have to go in and clean up the plates. Mally does not like homes. <laughs> so, thanks for visiting our little suburban garden hobby place we call it Woods Haven Farm because my husband and I dream we dream till next time